Whenever you're working with a lot of layers in Photoshop, sometimes it gets very difficult to locate a particular layer, right? And we are all guilty of that. Let's say we are working on a composite and we created a shadow layer, but we don't know where that exactly is. We just tend to turn off and on a lot of layers to kind of find it and it's annoying. But luckily, there's a feature in Photoshop that allows you to search the layers deeply. You can search the layers by name. You can search them by type. There's a lot of things you can do. And a lot of us are not utilizing that feature. Let's take a look. So here we are in Photoshop and have a look at the layers panel. Have a look at the search icon right there. It does stand for something, right? So right now it is set to kind. You can search the layer by the kind of layer it is. But first, Let's look at name. So if you click on the drop down, you can search the layer by name. Let's choose name. And then if you're looking for a shadow layer and you name that shadow, you can actually start typing SHA and it's going to show up. There was a layer that I created for warmth. I can just start typing it and I can find it. And then I found it. Have a look before, after I can just open up the properties and change the properties here and there. And you get the point. I can just increase or decrease the opacity and change the settings. The other way that you can find the layer is by kind. Before I get into the other ways, there is this button, off and on button. Even if you type something, let's say shadow, and you're looking at all of the layer which have the name shadow in it, and you're working on all of them, and momentarily you want to keep that filter in, but momentarily you want to turn that off. You can actually click on this button and turn it off and turn it back on. Let's choose kind. You can also search layer by the kind of layer they actually are. So let's say we are looking for text layers, right? Let's say we had a text layer in there and let's type something text. We are only looking to edit the text. So let's say you have a brochure design. You don't want to touch the elements at the back. You don't want to touch the illustrations, just the text. And to keep it concentrated only on the text, you click on T that stands for text layers all of the text layers are gonna show up. Make sense? All right. You can also search for only adjustment layers. If you click on this button, this is the symbol of the adjustment layer. And how do we know that? Whenever we create an adjustment layer, we click on this button. Have a look at the symbol. It's the same right there. So you click on that and only adjustment layers are going to show up. Similarly, this one is for the raster layer. Let's say there's a simple layer that I create and I paint some squiggly lines on it. This is a simple raster layer. This is not a smart object. This is not a text. This is not an adjustment layer, just a simple raster layer. So I click on this button and only raster layers are going to show up. Similarly, there's filters for shape layers and smart objects. So let's say we had a shape layer in there. So let's create a rectangle, a simple rectangle, right? And this is actually a shape layer. And how do we know that? Have a look at the symbol right there and have a look at the symbol right here. And we only want to see shape layers. So we click on this button and only those layers are going to show up. Similarly, if you only want to see smart objects, you click on that button and only smart objects are going to show up. There are no smart objects. However, if you right click on layer seven and let's convert it to smart object. Now, when you click on that button, smart object button, it's going to show up. All right. The third thing here is effect. What kind of effect you have applied to it? Is there a drop shadow to it? Is there a bevel and emboss effect to it? So if we choose drop shadow, there are no layers where we have applied drop shadow. So let's just turn off the filter for now. You could do that. And let's apply drop shadow to it by double clicking on the right hand side of the layer. Turn on drop shadow. That's just a simple shadow. Increase the distance and let's just increase the size. There you go. Just a simple shadow we have applied to this and maybe I want to change the color to something brighter. This is just to show you guys. Now I only want to see the layer with drop shadows. All of the layers with drop shadow applied, I can just turn it on and choose drop shadow right there. So this layer is going to show up. Now there's other things like mode. What blend mode is there? The overlay blend mode. So this is the layer where we have applied overlay blend mode. Or is it the multiply blend mode? All of the layers with multiply blend mode are going to show up. All of the layer with normal blend mode are going to show up if we choose normal. All right. Now there's attributes. Is the layer visible or is it locked or is it not visible? Right. So if not, there are no layers which are not visible. All of the layers are visible. And this is very important. You're working on a composite and you have turned off a lot of layers and you want to see what those layer kind of bring or what they take away. For those times, you can just 
let's say these all layers are turned off and you only want to see the visible layers, you turn it on and choose visible. Only visible layers are going to show up. Sometimes there are certain elements you just don't need in a composite. You turn them off, only choose visible so that you're working with the visible element. And then for the other version, you can just turn the filter off and work with the layers that you had hidden. All right, now let's turn it on. And let's say I want to see the layers which I had hidden. I would choose not visible, right? There's a lot of attributes, empty layers. Sometimes what happens whenever we are creating a composite, we tend to create a layer and we think, all right, we're going to create some shadows in this layer. And then we forget about it and we begin to create a lot of layers on top of it. And just that layer just makes our entire composite look ugly or it's just confusing. So you want to delete all of those. You can just choose empty layers. The empty layers are going to show up. You can delete them. Or there's also a feature in the scripts. If you go to filter and then scripts, and then you choose delete all empty layers, it will automatically delete all of the empty layers. Now you can just check out all of these and there's clipped, right? All of those layers which are clipped are gonna show up right there. So let's say we only apply this curve to this rectangle. You can go to the properties, click on this button, create clipping mask button. That way only the rectangle is affected, all right? I darken it or brighten it, only the rectangle will be affected and I want to see clipped layers only. So this layer, this curves layer is clipped to this rectangle. So I click on this button and we choose clipped and only the clipped layers are going to show up. All right. So this just kind of wraps up attribute. Now there's color. This is interesting. You choose reds. None are going to show up. You choose orange. None are going to show up. You choose yellow. None are going to show up. You know why? This is not what color is inside of the layer. You might think that way because this background layer has a lot of colors, right? And this rectangle has yellow color too. And even then, if you choose yellow, it just doesn't show up. It is not the color inside the layer. It is the color by which you have indicated the layer. You can actually color code the layer. All right. So let's say this is the warmth layer, right? I color coded it by right clicking on it and then choose one of these colors called yellow, right? Now let me turn off this filter. You will see that the warmth layer is yellow color coded, right? Now let's say I want to color code the shadow with blue. Right click on it and then let's just bring it down to blue, right? Now if I turn on the filter and choose yellow, the layers which I had color coded yellow are going to show up and if I choose blue, Similarly, the layers which we had color coded blue are going to show up. This is nothing related to the color inside the layer. Similarly, the next one is a smart object. Right now, everything is showing up, but there are different kinds of smart objects. There's cloud ones, cloud smart objects. Whenever you add something from the libraries, they're going to show up right there. Linked smart object. We don't have any linked smart objects in this document. This one is any of the smart objects which have some errors because the linked file is gone, right? And these are just smart objects. So all of the smart objects are going to show up if you just click on that. All right, similar to the kind and then you click on that, it's the same. But smart objects, also there are different kinds of smart objects that you can look up right there. The next one is pretty simple and that is simply selected layer. So whatever layer is selected, so let's say the shadow layer is selected right now and you have thousands of layers and you don't know which one is selected, you just click on that drop down and you choose selected, the shadow layers are going to show up. Any layer that is selected, it's as simple as that. So let's say right now this text layer is selected, right? It's just a little bit brighter than the rest, which means that it's selected. You choose the drop down and you choose selected. Only the selected layer is going to show up. The next one is artboards. So let's say right now there's just one. So if I in the move tool, we create an artboard tool. We create one artboard right there and we create one more artboard right here. So there are two artboards and you can put your contents inside of these artboards. And once you choose artboard right here, only that artboard is going to show up and everything inside that artboard. Let's turn off the filter and let's say you want to only work with artboard one and then you choose artboard one, you turn it on, you choose only artboard and everything inside of artboard one is going to show up. 
interesting, isn't it? This is really helpful when you're working with brand projects. So let's say on one artboard, you have the brochures on one artboard, you have the business cards and you only want to focus on, let's say the brochure, everything that deals with the brochures and you don't want all of that clutter. You can choose one of these filters to just work and focus on that. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix and Perfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for all your support, thank you for watching, I will see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Life is for living.